So when you're getting started in photography, figuring out what equipment to buy can be kind of overwhelming. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing the must haves for beginners in photography, plus sharing tips on how to use all of those so you can take awesome photos coming up. Hey, my name is David Johnson, and on this channel, I'm really passionate about sharing the best tips and tools to help you level up the success and your love for your own photography, which is so, so important. So if that sounds like you, if you're into that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button right now. Now, in this video, we're talking about essential must-haves for beginner photography, and there's a lot to unpack in this topic. Number one, obviously is your camera. I have a lot of cameras on my shelves back here, but obviously there's one that I use more than any of those. So what I'm using more than any other is a Sony A7R II. Now I landed on this camera and you know, a camera is a must have for photographers. I actually have an entire video breaking down how to find the right camera for your photography on the card showing up on your screen right now. I'll also include that in the video description as well, so look for that there. Getting away from the obvious of just a camera, you can also have things like lenses. Now, cameras, if you're buying a new camera, you can get kit lenses, and if you're getting kit lenses, here's a power tip for saving some cash. Kit lenses that come with telephoto lenses are oftentimes the best value deal because wide angle lenses are typically cheaper than zoom lenses. So get the kit lens that is a telephoto zoom lens, something like a 55 to 210 is a pretty standard zoom lens for a kit. Anything along that is gonna get the job done, but I'll tell you why in just a second. First, the lens that I think everyone should have is a wide angle lens in their bag. And, and you know, I buy third party lenses a lot of times because it helps me save hundreds of dollars on lenses for my camera. But I have a Tamron 17 to 28 f 2.8 lens here, a phenomenal third party lens. But a wide angle lens is really going to help you get those photos that have wide foregrounds or long, big foregrounds. And a foreground is just what's at the front of your photo, typically at the bottom or on the sides. Those foreground features are gonna be massive and help you pull into the frame what you're looking at going towards the subject in the back. Wide angle lens is what you're going to use to create those photos. And if you want more information on any of these, I do have affiliate links to Amazon and B&H and others in the video description as well if you wanna check those out. Like I said, this is a Tamron lens. You don't have to buy what I have, it's just some interesting information to help you along the way. Other than that, if you're not getting a kit lens that is a telephoto lens, I highly suggest something like a 70 to 200 lens. Now, keep in mind, I'm a landscape photographer, so wide angles and 70 to 200s could literally get me anything that I want it to. And yes, I have other lenses on here, but these two lenses are really gonna help you get 98% of the photos that you're ever going to take. Most of the time I don't take these other lenses with me at all. I just take my wide angle and my 70 to 200. And that's because a 70 to 200 gets those big grand scenes that allow me to photograph with compression. This is a Sony 70 to 200 F4 and it's a great lens to have in my bag, pretty lightweight for a telephoto lens, but those photos with a lot of compression help me create images that show distance and scale. And I think that's when a telephoto lens really shines. You know, getting a composition where mountains are stacked together or a tree is in front of a mountain or a waterfall shot with a 70 to 200 is a really go-to move for me because it helps me show serene photos in nature, but also helps me compress distances together and show a lot, a vast distance in a very small space. So that's what a telephoto lens will really do. And you can see the difference in a wide angle and a telephoto lens on the screen right now and how different those two shots look. Again, using just those two lenses, I'm not gonna tell you to buy 
a 35 prime. I'm not going to tell you to buy, you know, all these other lenses, a macro. These two lenses are going to do basically everything you need them to do outside of the 5% of the other kinds of photos. And a power tip for you as a beginner, since you're starting out and getting the most out of these lenses, buy zooms of these lenses. And a zoom just means you're getting the ability to zoom from 17 to 28 in a wide angle. So 17 millimeters to 28 millimeters. You get the opportunity to zoom from 70 to 200 millimeters. That's what a zoom is. If you're using a prime, you're stuck with one thing. Primes do not zoom. That is a prime fixed lens at let's say 24 millimeters for a wide angle or 50 millimeters or 70 millimeters or 200 millimeters, you're gonna be buying a lot more lenses to get the photos that you wanna get versus buying a zoom that's gonna allow you to get a lot of range out of those lenses. So that really does it for the camera. That's literally all you need in your camera bag to take 95% of the shots that you want to as long as you know how to use your camera, how to use your lenses, and I've given you some tips on that. The next thing is essential, essential, essential. And it's essential to buy a good one of these. That is a tripod. Now, I use a photo pro tripod that's pretty stout, pretty sturdy. This is also a very expensive tripod. I'm not gonna lie to you on that but I needed a tripod that I could rely on because I'm often jumping in streams of high water rushing by me and I needed a tripod that was number one, lightweight, and that could get the job done. Now, you don't have to buy an expensive, super sturdy, super tall tripod. What you can do is buy kind of like a cheaper tripod online, but I want you to take some essential ingredients for what to buy in this. Number one, it probably needs to be pretty lightweight. If you're like me, you like to go out long distances and take your tripod, it needs to be sturdy enough so really your two options on this are aluminum and carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is gonna be a lot more expensive and aluminum is gonna be a lot more heavy. So you kinda of have to weigh your options there. Would you rather spend less money and take more weight with you with an aluminum tripod or would you like to spend more money and take less weight with a carbon fiber tripod? Both are perfectly acceptable. I've used both in the past. But I think going with these two options is really important. What I think is really essential is, is it durable? Because you're taking this out into the elements, you want it to last a long time. Durable gear is important. I can't tell you how many things I've bought cheap on Amazon that I've spent more money when I should have just bought a really good brand instead of the cheap brands on Amazon. I think buying right is more important than saving money sometimes. So a tripod is just gonna help you keep your photos still and not having any camera shake and high winds, weird angles where you're trying to get in the right shot, the right perspective. And it's also going to help you take really cool long exposure shots like night scenes. It's gonna help you take Milky Way photos waterfall photos, all these things require a tripod and that's why you need it in your camera bag. Speaking of camera bags, a good backpack is an essential. What do you need in a camera bag? Not the gear, but what do you need out of it? I made a whole video on all the camera bags I've bought, wasted money on, spent more money on than I've should, and what I learned out of that, if you click the card showing up on your screen right now, you can watch that whole video. I use an f-stop bag and, and hopefully that's the right bag for you. If it's not, I have several others in that video for you to look at too. But I think a good backpack, especially one that can hold all your gear safely, is weather sealed, meaning no rain or snow or dust or sand can get into it. Really durable when you bump it up against rocks. There's a lot to consider with a camera bag and you can watch that whole video. Again, I'll pin all these in the video description too for you to look at. Now, finally, the last piece of essential must-haves for beginner photographers is a great editing software. And I'm not talking a good editing software. I want you to have a software that does everything, obviously. I want you to be able to import your photos 
easily organize them, edit them, and export them all in the same software. And you've probably heard of Adobe Photoshop. Well, that's not what I'm gonna recommend here. I'm recommending Adobe Lightroom. Now, if you wanna learn both, I think the best of both worlds for beginners, even intermediates and pros, is using the Adobe Photographer's Creative Cloud account. Now, I have a link in this in those affiliate links in the video description for you to check out and get that at just $9.99 a month. I think that's beyond generous from Adobe to get that amount of information and software for editing your photos uh, because if one piece of Lightroom equipment changes, they have a whole new Lightroom software that you have to buy. That could be upwards of $300. If you're just paying $9.99 a month, you're spending less than that in a year and guaranteed on the latest and greatest software updates as they come out with your subscription. Not to mention you're getting Photoshop along with that that you can learn at a later date whenever you wanna throw that in there. So Lightroom with the Adobe Creative Cloud account is a must have for any beginner photography. Just jump right in and start learning that. I hope you got a ton of value out of this. Again, I'm gonna put those two card videos right here on the screen for you to watch the camera and the bag video. And please remember to subscribe if you got a lot of value out of this. Happy shooting, can't wait to see you out on the trails.